so last week I took a look at the i3-2120 and I tested it in a bunch of games. Then I proceeded to use it for over a week straight after that. Why? Because I wanted to see how the CPU handles just my daily tasks. So the CPU, it's holding up just fine for the most part. Yes, it isn't the fastest. Yes, it isn't an i5, or an i7, or an i7, or no, i9-12900K, it's not any of those. But it is pretty decent, I've been able to edit videos on it. I edited 32 videos, and I'm not exaggerating, on this CPU. It works, the only downside is exporting times. Also, the other thing is, when you're trying to play a game like Minecraft, you can't exactly play with shaders. You can, but it does lag significantly more than without shaders. And you also can't play with sodium. You actually have to use Optifine with this CPU. The reason why is with Optifine, it gets a higher average frame rate and a smoother experience than with sodium. Usually it's opposite, I guess because this is more of a CPU bottleneck than anything. Optifine seems to be the better option with slower CPUs. If you're running a slower CPU, try Optifine if you're using Sodium, and it might help you out. Besides that, pretty much every game I play, I just lock the frame rate to 45, and it gets rid of nearly any stutter there is, which is a quite nice, you know, thing. You don't want the game to be stuttering constantly, so locking the frame rate does help out quite a bit with that. Also, I tried playing some modded Minecraft with this CPU, to be exact, all of Fabric 5, and that mod pack has around 250 mods in it, which is not a small mod pack by any means, and actually was able to play the mod pack pretty much just fine. Yes, loading up a world takes quite a long time, and loading all the chunks in the general area take a long time. But that's also partly because I had to use Sodium because Optifine doesn't work for the mod for some reason. I don't know why. I need to work that out. Now, I have seen some issues in games like For Horizon 5 where textures wouldn't load. I cannot test that myself because I don't actually own the game. With OBS recording, it's been holding up just fine. I have had some issues while gaming with OBS. Though, putting OBS in the higher priority in the task manager does fix the problem, and it doesn't have any issue after that. Also, I would like to test out Cyberpunk 2077 on this. The reason why is Cyberpunk is a very, very, very CPU intensive game. When I say that, I do mean it. Every computer I have with a slower CPU, struggles worse on Cyberpunk than any other game I've ever tested. Besides New World, New World somehow tops it, barely. But currently I am stuck on a mission, and I'm stuck inside of a building in Cyberpunk. I don't know how to get out of it. I've been there for like a month and a half. <laughs> I need to start watching some tutorials on how to get through that. That's fine. And just for general daily usage, if it was an office computer, this CPU is holding up absolutely fine. There is no issues I can find when it comes to daily usage, like Discord works fine, Zoom works fine, Steam works fine, nearly every game in my Steam collection works fine. I do need to double check the game called Halo Infinity just to make sure it wasn't actually a multiplayer bug or uh, the servers were down or something because if you didn't watch the previous video i do recommend watching it by the way shameless plug <laughs> uh halo infinity didn't work it was giving me multiplayer errors i don't know why so i need to double check that actually let's double check that now okay i'm back from playing halo infinity and um i am very impressed i wasn't even expecting to get into a game I was expecting the CPU to just not be powerful enough, so it's just going to give another error, but I am very wrong. You got into a game. But then I was still thinking, yeah, it's not going to run well, but I am wrong there too. I was thinking maybe it might get 15 frames per second on the low settings with a 30 FPS minimum and a 60 FPS cap or target. 
Uh, but no, I am very wrong. So, sort of. So, I originally had a ma maximum FPS in the game of 60, if I remember correctly, on the low settings 1440p. Well, with MSI Afterburner Rivia Tuner, I went over and kept the frame rate to 45, and the game was lucky to get 30 frames per second, and it was full of stutters. Keep in mind, I did have a 30 frame per second minimum in the game set as well, so that didn't work too good. Then I tried limiting the frame rate inside of the game to 40 frames per second, and I went over and made the minimum frames per second 32. Or was it 30? I don't remember. Something like that. Either way, it actually ran very nice, and it wasn't stuttery at all, from what I can see. I'm sure there could have been little stutters here and there on the frame time graph, but it didn't feel bad. Yes, it's not ideal for a competitive experience if you're a super competitive player, but if you're a casual player like me, just hop on and play for a few minutes and die constantly, you won't notice much of a difference, probably. I had a nice time playing. Now, I also tried limiting the game to 50 frames per second, though the problem there is there were stutters when I limited the game to 50 frames per second, so 40 seems to be the sweet spot, and it actually played pretty decently, and I'm pretty impressed with it. I know this was a shorter video, and it was also quite unscripted, but I just thought I should give you an update on how the CPU is holding up.